I'd like to welcome Nicole Hess, a chiropractor and Annex member working uh, with Karen Rowe RMT out of our Annex location. Uh, so you can absolutely visit Nicole Hess um, at our Annex location in their private office if you feel so inclined. After this, we'll make sure that you get Nicole's information as well. Um, Nicole, how are you? Why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself as well? Okay. Hi, Nicole. There you are. Welcome. Um, Nicole, can you tell us a little bit about the focus of your practice and the body work that you do? Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Let me try to share the screen and then to make sure it's working. And I actually got a slide on that. How, how is that? Perfect. Great. Then I'll just let you take it away. Um, thanks for being here, Nicole. I'm so excited to have another session led by a CSI member. Uh, take it away. Thanks for having me. And I and I hope this is going to work here. Okay, so I'll, I'll get started um, right away. And I tell a bit about myself in, in the course of the presentation. Let me just do this. Okay, so today's topic is how to work from home during a pandemic, ergonomic workspace hacks, and uh, I'm Dr. Nicole Hess. Now I wanted to share my contact information right at the beginning in case there are questions that don't get answered today. I know we might be a bit tight for time. So you can reach me uh, by email at drhess at urbansouls.ca or we can chat on Facebook at Urban Souls Toronto. Um, the Facebook page is currently not up yet, and the web page is also not up yet. I'm about to launch my practice, so all these things are being worked on as we speak. So who am I? I'm a chiropractor, as Tara mentioned, and I have a unique focus on the feet as the foundation of the body. I help urban professionals to relieve lower extremity and spinal pain, improve their posture, and prevent overuse injuries, and I work with both individuals and businesses. My therapy of choice is orthotic therapy, and that is the use of custom orthopedic insoles, as this can both treat and prevent common musculoskeletal conditions, and it does not require regular doctor visits. And that is really important for me. I always say an ounce of prevention is better than, or is more than a pound of cure. And if there's anything I can do that doesn't require me to spend a lot of time and effort, then I'd rather do that as opposed to dealing with a problem that comes up along the lines. And as Sarah mentioned, I'm a new member of the CSI ANIC, where I'm about to launch my practice in May. A brief disclaimer here, because I am a healthcare provider, um, so just to let you know, the information presented here is for educational purposes only, and it is not intended to diagnose, cure, or remedy any medical conditions or replace advice from your attending healthcare provider. Now I'd like to get some feedback from um, the people attending this webinar. What is your number one challenge when working from home? Um, please think about that, type it in the chat, but don't send it yet so we can have them all at once. Oops. Tara, would you mind um, reading a couple from the chat, please? I don't have, I think I have to leave the screen. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, please do send your answers now. I'm, I'm excited to hear them. I'm seeing back pain. I'm sitting, sitting lots, um, distracted by the cat, especially when he takes my chair and I don't want to stand anymore. Lack of desk, desk space. Amir's wrist hurts. We were talking about that earlier. Um, I also have uh, a fair amount of neck stiffness and pain when I've been on my laptop too much. And good stuff, good stuff. Tired shoulders, elbow pain, rhomboid pain, palm pain. I understand that one too. Rolling shoulders. Um, I've missed one posture at the computer, uh, neck posture, elbows. Good stuff. This is all very common and I hear these things a lot and the pandemic only seems to have made those worse. So today um, we're going to talk about um, the top six problems that are contributing to a rise in occupational discomfort and especially neck pain. So we've heard neck pain a lot. Um, this is going to be the focus here. 
and then there are ergonomic hacks. And these are not just uh, related to furniture or the environment, but also functional and brain-based recommendations, uh, because these are things that we don't often uh, think about when we hear ergonomics, but those are all things that ergonomics includes. Now, what is ergonomics? Uh, so literally it means work science or the science of work. And I really like uh, this definition by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Ergonomics can roughly be defined as the study of people in their working environment. And the goal is to eliminate discomfort and risk of injury due to work. This is a really practical definition and nails it because ergonomics is uh, a term that, or is a discipline that developed from engineering. So it is very technical or it can be very technical. And this is a more practical approach. So what are our ergonomic goals for working from home and today's presentation? So in short, we want proper alignment across all workspaces. And if you look at the first image here, don't get hung up on the numbers. It's not about numbers, it's actually fairly simple. So proper alignment basically is, starting from your head, you basically want your ears over your shoulders, the shoulders over the hips, and then the knees over the feet. That's more or less what we want. We have the thighs parallel to the floor and we have the forearms parallel to the floor. So you see, we automatically have a 90 degree angle at the elbow and a 90 degree angle at the knee, but we don't have to worry about these angles if we just keep those simple alignment uh, parameters in mind. And you can see here the, the way the person looks at the screen. So they can look straight ahead and see the top part of the screen. That's where most of us work when checking your email and whatnot. If, you, if you're a programmer or computer person, you might look a little lower on the screen, uh, but she or they can do that um, pretty well by just moving their eyes and not moving their head. The same applies to standing. It's, it's even uh, a more straightforward here. So it's perfect alignment from head to toe, basically. So that's what we're aiming for. And we have to find some hacks to make that work in our non-ideal home uh, situation right now. Now, if you look at these images, um, is this you? Can you identify with, with any of these people? Someone was complaining uh, about their cat um, that is also common. Um, or you are at home and you have to uh, take care of your kids at the same time. And of course, all of us are thrown into um, all kinds of circumstances, working on the bed, the living room, the couch. So ask yourself, do you find yourself working long hours hunched over your laptop at the dining table or couch? Are you working from home due to the pandemic? And do you find yourself ill prepared to do so? Are you suffering from upper extremity or spinal pain? Do you have to fight your pet for the best ch chair in the house? If you answered any, uh, if you answered yes to any of these questions, then you have come to the right place. Uh, but we may wonder why, why is that? Why are we dealing with these things? People have worked at home all the time. What's different? And I really like this quote here. This is from last week's presentation. Uh, the presenter mentioned it and I thought it really summarizes well what we're all going through. Quote, you're not working from home. You are at your home in a crisis trying to work. And I find it, it couldn't be said any better. This is really what this is. You're not alone in this. The pandemic has forced many professionals to work from home. The situation is uncomfortable. And in some areas, we see a marked increase in occupational discomfort. Neck pain being one of them. Neck pain is the most prevalent occupational discomfort experienced by professionals working from home during the pandemic. Now, what do these numbers mean? Nearly 70% of people working from home are suffering from neck pain. 75 of those working primarily off a laptop reported neck pain, and only 20% of professionals who do not work off a laptop reported neck pain. And all day laptop use is one of the top six problems of working from home and a major culprit for neck pain. So let's dig in. Um, so the top six problems of working from home and that contribute to rise in occupational discomfort are all day laptop use, working from dining chairs, desk drawers, the couch as workspace, the bed as workspace, 
and what I call standing desk confusion. Now let's look at problem number one, um, all day laptop use. Now this requires the user to look down onto the screen. Most commonly screens are small. The most common use screen size is 13 inches. And this encourages uh, what is called tech neck or also known as forward head posture. And we will talk about that in the next slides. Now, what's also interesting is that prolonged use is associated with near vision abnormalities, and that is not something we usually think about. But what is technic? So technic from all day laptop use is a postural distortion pattern. Uh, it is forward head posture, and that means your head moves forward in relation to your shoulders. If you remember the image at the beginning that showed um, proper sitting posture and the alignment. So we're supposed to have the ears over the shoulders and over the hips. So in tech neck, we have the neck that translate forward. And as a result, we have a hunched uh, upper back here. And by doing so, uh, the, the weight of the head on the neck significantly increases. Shockingly, actually. For each 15 degrees of um, increase in neck angle, you're piling up pounds. And if you are like this guy looking at your cell phone, what all of us do a million times a day, your head actually weighs 60 pounds as opposed to the seven to 12 pounds it usually weighs. Imagine your head is supposed to weigh seven to 12 pounds and now you're carrying a 60 pound weight around your uh, on your shoulders every day. So I did mention near vision abnormalities. Looking down onto your laptop screen all day long is associated with a staggering 60% reduction in visual field. And that means your peripheral gaze. So um, you know that we, we uh, perceive things that we don't actually have to look at. So we see much more without actually moving our eyes in, into that direction. And this is our peripheral gaze. And by constantly looking down onto your laptop screen, you're, you're disregarding the, the upper quadrant of your eyes. And it's like in the gym, like exercising your muscles. If you don't use it, you lose it. Now let's, um, I'd like to check this out with you guys. Are you working all your eye muscles? Now you might go to the gym to exercise your back, your neck, no, not your neck, your back, <laughs> your chest, it's chest day, but today it is eye day. So if you can pick up a pen, I have one with a red tip and hold it out about an arm width in front of your face and then slowly draw large circles. So I'm just going to explain. I think my background is blocking me from showing it. So slowly, very slowly, draw large circles and follow the tip of your pen with your eyes. Tara, you might want to go a little slower. Go real slow and make sure you're challenging your peripheral vision. So you're making tall circles that really force your eyes to go into all fields of gaze. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to do that. Those of you <clears throat> who have completed this exercise, maybe briefly type into the chat, what did, what did you notice? And Tara, do you mind reading it for us? Did you notice anything at all? Um, Amir said he felt the contraction. I think of the muscles. Um, I thought it was interesting that I just automatically went so much narrower. Like I didn't really think my field of vision, I didn't think of it as that big. <clears throat> Did any of you notice that going up is actually much more difficult than going down? Like my eyes really felt I had to, I had to strain to look upwards. And at mm -hmm. some point my eyes lost traction and then they were refocusing um, and that is due to because I spend all my day on looking down on my laptop and I've only implemented ergonomics <laughs> more, more recently because, you know, that's it's, it's human nature. We only do things once there's a problem. Um, so for me, it is difficult to actually look up and my eyes are straining. 
Now, if you if you feel that's your problem too, or just as a general uh, preventative measure, this exercise can actually be your rehab exercise. Um, so this is called large eye circles and you want to sit or stand with good posture and then uh, as we just did hold out a pen or finger in front of you and really slowly draw large circles in the air with your pen and make sure only your eyes are following that pen tip. If we have limited range of motion, we tend to you know, move our head, move our shoulders. So more things than just the eyes are moving. So make sure you're just using the eyes and then do this for 30 seconds in each direction twice daily. You can do this every day. It's a really good exercise, but it is also very powerful. If you're not used to it, you might get dizzy or get headaches. So work your way up to 30 seconds, just like any other exercise. Another rehab exercise to combat tech neck is neck retractions. Uh, the neck is one of the two places in the spine that get um, the most problems and tech neck is one of the problems. So neck retractions combat this kind of posture. So what you do is you sit up with good posture, sit up straight, you place your finger on your chin and then you retract your chin. It's almost like making a double chin so that your ears are aligned with your shoulders. And then you hold this retraction for 10 seconds and you repeat it five times twice daily. If you have neck pain or not, you can do this exercise twice a day, all day long. It's a really good preventative exercise, but it also help you, helps you if you are having neck pain. Um, later on, as you progress, you could use an, a resistance band and add resistance, but usually it is not necessary. The, the muscles in the neck are pretty subtle, at least the ones that we're trying to train. So resistance isn't necessary. Now, all of this um, is good advice, but we need to actually fix the source of the problem. Rehab is, is a good thing, but we need to remove the source of the problem, and that's the ergonomics. So what could we do? Uh, and this is hack number one. So for a seated desk setup, the number one thing that I can't recommend enough and, and that you should really invest in is an external keyboard and an external pointing device like a mouse or a trackpad. And then raise your um, laptop, use a laptop riser or any other common day objects such as books, boxes to raise up your laptop so that the screen is at eye level. If you can, an external monitor to provide a larger screen would be ideal. Um, if you can't limit working from a laptop, if that's an option, uh, that is not the best equipment to use. So if you can, don't work off a laptop or limit it. So for standing desk setup, this is pretty much the same. Uh, same parameters apply. Use an extra use external devices and prop up, prop up the screen. And you can see this is this is a bot um, desk adapter, but you can probably make this yourself. And nowadays they come in all shapes and sizes, and they don't have to be expensive either. So they're readily available, and and you could use that. Uh, problem number two: working from dining chairs. So dining chairs, usually you would sit at a dining table and dining tables are fine. They are the same size as a desk, but uh, the chairs are lower than your office desk. So that means your ergonomics, especially your upper body ergonomics, aren't as they should be. Uh, you can see it a bit here. He's sitting a little lower. So his shoulder and elbow angle aren't great. And with prolonged use, you would probably get some shoulder issues there. Now also, um, dining chairs, they don't have armrests or the armrests aren't adjustable. So that again, adds some strain onto the shoulders. But no problem, we got a hack for it. The number one thing we need to do is actually uh, prop ourselves up so that we sit higher. Uh, use a firm cushion or a blanket to prop yourself up. Um, and then the next thing you can see is she has a chair with a higher armrest. Uh, the guy in the previous picture, his actually back, backrest was lower. So a higher backrest is good. And then it can use a rolled up towel or, or a, a blanket and put it in the small of your back for back support. So you can see with minimal equipment, everything she found at home, she has a pretty good ergonomic setup. And then what she did is prop up the laptop onto looks like printer paper or books or, or anything. And she has almost perfect setup. 
Um, sure, she doesn't have the armrests, but this is this is pretty simple to do. Everyone can do this, and and it'll do a lot for you. Um, and again, as we said before, working from um, the laptop have external devices. Now, um, coming back to this, if you look at the dining table here, uh, there is a little uh, panel here. Now, if you have a dining table where this panel is lower and it doesn't allow you to prop yourself up on the chair, we need to do something else. So essentially we keep the desktop set up the same, but we're using a lap desk instead. And so she places her external keyboard and, and mouse onto the lap desk and the rest remains the same. This is a really good, sorry. This is a really good uh, tool to have. You can pretty much make any workspace, an ergonomic workspace, and you can take that to the CSI and uh, work away in an ergonomic fashion. So that's a really good tool too. And then the same parameters apply as we said before. Now, uh, talking so much about sitting all day, uh, we wanna do something to, to combat the gravity. So gravity is pulling us into what's called a flexor dominant posture. So that means it's trying to pull us forward. And if, if you sit all day, you've probably noticed that it is so much easier to slouch than to sit straight up. Sitting straight up really is effort and, and it requires a lot of uh, conscious effort. So we wanna counteract the gravity and do um, a posture break once every hour where we are going into the opposite direction. So if you wanna do this with me here, you can sit or stand, make sure it's always uh, sound posture bring your arms out to the side and turn your thumbs backwards and also out to the side. Drop your head back, chest out, and hold this for about 30 seconds while taking deep belly breaths. Make sure to do this every working hour. Which brings us to problem number three. I call it the dreadful desk drawer. Now desk drawers are terribly in fashion these days because they are uh, kind of a hybrid furniture. They are an office desk, but not really. So they fit with pretty much um, every type of uh, living situation. And that's why they're popular. Now the problem though is that they're often used in conjunction or they're meant to be used in conjunction with a dining chair. And as we know, the dining chair is too low. Um, and the problem is, because they have this desk drawer, we can't really prop ourselves up on the chair with the cushion. So the drawer impedes our ability uh, to do that. And, and that's the main issue with the desk drawer. Now, how could we fix that? If you can, get rid of the drawer. I know that's probably the, the thing why you bought the drawer in the first place, but if you can take this out, even if it's just temporarily, then this should allow you to use a firm cushion or blanket to sit on. Um, and then to restore proper ergonomics. Now, if you can't take that out, you could try to use, um, elevate the legs by using shims or felt pads, but depending on your DIY skills or how much you have to raise it, that might not be a very, a very stable uh, construction or, or very safe. So that's not an option. An alternative would be to use a lap desk, just like we've talked about before, and then uh, raise up the screen with books or, or, uh, or paper. Problem number four, the couch as workspace. Now the couch brings all the problems with it that laptop working brings with it. So you're, you're looking down onto the laptop screen for a prolonged period of time and you're prone to forward head posture. Now, in addition to this, the couch is often too soft there is not sufficient back support and there's no arm support bilaterally. Um, now we have this issue with a number of, um, of um, furniture pieces that we use for working. Um, and one of the major problems is probably that the laptop is prone to overheating when you use it the way it was intended, namely on your lap. So how do we fix that? What's really helpful in this situation is a lap desk or suitable equivalent. When I say suitable, I don't mean a pillow because that has the same problem as putting it on your lap. The, lap, uh, the um, laptop is prone to overheating. I've seen people use binders 
um, they are also slanted. So that might work for you, but a lab test, we've used that before as a pretty versatile thing to have. And then again, he's leaning back a bit too much. So he would have to use pillows to uh, sit up straighter and maintain a neutral spine. And one thing that's important here too is keep your feet planted on the floor and not necessarily up on the couch. And if you can limit working on the couch to no more than 30 minutes at a time. Problem number five, the bed as workspace. Uh, that is probably the worst option. It really blurs the boundaries between work and living space at its most intimate place. Working from home blurs the boundaries between working and living anyways, um, but that's probably the worst scenario. Also, if we're working in our bed, we, are, we might just you know, keep going and then transition right from, you know, put the laptop away, fall asleep and, and go to bed. And uh, the problem with that is that blue light emitting devices such as your laptop, a tablet, a smartphone or your TV can interfere with your circadian rhythm and really mess up your sleep if you're using these devices two hours prior to going to sleep. So what can we do about it to make the ergonomics better? You could use uh, a bed or table tray, a laptop riser or a lab desk. There are uh, lots of options, many of them we've already talked about. And then support your back with pillows, blankets, sit as upright as possible and maintain a neutral spine. Now, um, this thing here is adjustable, so she isn't optimally positioned. You can see she's leaning back. The elbow angle is fine, but it's going up here. So she would have to lower the, the table and then sit up a bit straighter. She would still have the same issue of looking down onto her uh, laptop, which would strain her neck, but at least we have fixed the upper body ergonomics. In, in some situations, you just can't have it all. You need to pick your pain. Do you want to compromise your neck? Do you want to compromise your shoulders or your wrists? It depends on what you're more prone to, what, what injuries you've had in the past, it's, it's highly subjective for everyone. Uh, now, since we're talking about the bedroom, ensure you have adequate lighting and avoid glare. And then again, just like working on the couch, limit working from the bed to no more 30 minutes at a time. The alternative is you could repurpose your furniture. For example, transform your bedroom drawer chest into a standing desk. And I thought this is a pretty neat idea. She just pulled out the middle drawer, put some magazines or book on top of her clothes to uh, put her external um, keyboard there. And then she put the laptop on the drawer. And this is almost perfect. If you remember the first picture, we have perfect alignment from the ears to the feet. And also she's standing on the carpet, so not on hard floor. Her, her feet are probably happy about that too. So this is really good and it, it didn't cost her anything. Now, when you do this and you stand, make sure you alternate between standing and sitting. Uh, many people get this part wrong and they just stand the entire time and that is just as bad as sitting the entire time. Which brings me to problem number six that I call the standing desk confusion. Um, as I mentioned, many people think if they have a standing desk, they actually need to stand all day, but um, that is just as bad as prolonged sitting. Uh, static postures in general, they cause metabolites in your muscles and then you feel like you've exercised without actually having exercised and you might experience uh, swollen ankles, swollen legs. And prolonged standing can cause or aggravate foot pain, knee pain, low back pain, and even neck pain. Especially on hard surfaces, prolonged standing can cause or aggravate foot pain. Now let's look at this here. I was on my, you may be wondering now, how can prolonged standing cause lower extremity and spinal pain? So I was looking for some high visibility socks because as a cyclist, you do everything to be more visible <laughs> to cars, <laughs> even if it's socks. So I was looking for socks and I found these ones. Um, and I just realized the sock model here has some problems. Uh, have a look at this picture. Do you guys notice anything that looks not normal to you, that strikes you? Put it in the chat if you, if you see anything that doesn't look normal to you. 
And Tara, if you uh, wouldn't mind reading the answers if we get some. Andrew is saying, it looks like he has two heels. <laughs> Um, also, the the inner ankle looks sort of I don't know like there's a it's rolled in or or something. Um, Susan says his left leg is leaning inwards, standing like a duck from Karen. Maybe extra ankles. <laughs> Maybe extra ankles. You don't need to X-ray the ankles. So uh, chiropractors don't like to X-ray people if there is not an indication for it, and in most cases that there isn't, unless you had acute trauma. So no, we, we have other things to to find out what's um, the problem. But you guys are pretty observant. That's good. So yes, you are right. If you you know have X-ray vision and imagine his shin bone here and and his heel bone is here, and you're trying to bisect both, so you're drawing a straight line down here, then the line should go straight through the shin bone and through the heel bone. But in his case, it doesn't. So, and you are right, his ankles are rolled in. His Achilles tendon here is bowed medially. And I, I don't know if it's just me, but I find the left is actually worse than the right. And we see more toes on the left than on the right. So that's another indication of uh, that there's something wrong here. And this is asymmetrical. So he has it on both sides, but the left is worse than the right. This is common. This is actually very common. And this is a, a reason for why people are having pain in the rest of their spine, even if they don't have foot pain. So eight in 10 people suffer from a type of foot dysfunction that's called overpronation. Uh, and what this is, here we have the, the, the x-ray image, if you will. So you see the ankles are rolled inwards. This is the left foot here. And when this happens, the arch, so this is the, the inner side of your foot. This is what it normally looks like. This is your normal foot and you have a bit of arch there. And this is when it collapses. So when you have overpronation, your foot rolls inwards and then it is not stable and the arch collapses. Now look at this image here. What happens when the arch collapses? It's a, whole, it's a, it's a chain reaction. So when the arch collapses, the um, knee rotates inwards, the pelvis tilts, and the shoulder drops. And so this basically affects everything from the foot to the neck, and the body needs to compensate. And this is one of the reasons, or actually a, a major reason, for why people experience low back pain when they are standing. Because imagine standing on this for prolonged periods of time. Standing anyways, if it's a hot surface, is problematic for your feet. But when your body compensates and you stand like that, uh, it's no wonder that people give up on their standing desk. Now, you shouldn't give up on your standing desk. We can fix that. How do we do this? Um, so wear supportive footwear, ideally fitted with custom orthotics, which address any biomechanical dysfunction, such as overpronation. You could also wear compression stocks, uh, socks to improve blood circulation and avoid swelling, and avoid standing on hard surfaces or stand on an anti-gravity mat. They come in all shapes and sizes here and are really helpful. Now, people often ask, well, if it's about cushioning, couldn't I just get over-the-counter insoles like Dr. Scholz or whatever? Um, you could if the purpose is cushioning your feet, but that doesn't take away the dysfunction, right? So like we've seen for this guy uh, in the yellow socks, it wouldn't help his problem. He would still have back pain because he still has the problem. Now, as for the desk itself, uh, use a desk adapter to convert your desk into a stand capable desk here like this. Ideally, the screen is at eye level and we have this here. And then your external keyboard can be reached without compromising upper body biomechanics. Now you don't have to, even though desk adapters are readily available and they don't have to break the bank, you, don't, you can pretty much DIY it just like she is doing use common household items. So she's basically standing next to the sink, which you can, right? It works. Uh, make sure wherever you are, your workspace is well lit. And one of the most important things, alternate between standing and sitting. The ideal ratio is three to one. So three parts standing, one part sitting, but you have to wait, work your way up to it. Build up your endurance gradually, just like exercising. 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, take home points. Have a primary workspace with a table and a chair, and the chair ideally have a, a high back support. Strive for a well-lit and distraction-free zone, ideally separate from your living space. Employ ergonomic hacks to fit your workspace to your needs. As we've talked about, the chair cushions to sit higher, a rolled up blanket or towel for lumbar support. Avoid static postures. This is really important. Get up every 30 minutes and change your position. Limit laptop use or utilize an external screen. Use an external keyboard and pointing device such as a mouse or trackpad. Use a riser, desk adapter, or common household items such as a stack of books, a box to elevate your screen to eye level. Avoid placing the laptop directly onto your lap. Use a lap desk or equivalent instead. Limit working off the couch or bed, no more than 30 minutes at a time, uh, and limit total use of the couch and bed for working. Ensure adequate lighting and avoid glare. Employ ergonomic hacks to fit your workspace needs, such as remove drawers from the drawer desk, use chair cushions and lumbar support, and use a lap desk as needed. Alternate between sitting and standing, ideally three to one. Make sure to work up your endurance gradually get up or um, get up every 30 minutes and switch positions. When choosing to stand up to work, use a desk adapter to add sit-stand capability to your desk or repurpose countertops or drawer chests. Avoid standing on hard surfaces or stand on an anti-gravity mat and wear supportive footwear, ideally fitted with custom orthotics or orthotic sandals.